Hi, and uh, welcome to part two of open source mallet discussion. Uh, Nicole, we just got done talking about cores and handles and, and a lot of the challenges that we have uh, facing us with that. When it comes to talking about stuff that comes in between the core and the yarn, it's a much happier situation because there's a really wide variety of things you can use. I'm going to tell you about some of my favorites. And the great news is that a lot of these things are really, really inexpensive and easy to get your hands on uh, if you know where to look. First thing we need to talk about is, uh, I mentioned it briefly in the last video, this rubber stuff, this latex tubing, it comes in these long lengths, and depending on the size, it can be this really floppy stuff. You've probably seen uh, much smaller versions of this on those home, e like, like TheraBands or those home exercise things that have stretchy rubber tubing. Um, that rubber tubing is just much, much smaller versions of what we, of what, you know, people use to make mallets. Um... In my own, oh boy, sorry, I just fell off the table, hold on a sec. Yeah, length of larger stuff. You know, it's it's used as a hose, so if, if you buy it from industrial suppliers, a lot of times they'll want to sell you 50 feet or whatever. Um, but again, if you go to mcmastercar.com, you can buy it by the foot uh, at very reasonable prices. Let me tell you about a few sizes that are really, really uh, useful. So this is that Stevens LS10 core that we were talking about before, which has this one layer of rubber tubing, which is this stuff right here. This is, okay, get the math right. This is three quarter inch inner diameter with a one eighth inch wall, which makes the outer diameter one inch. And this is just, a, this is just about a one inch long slice of it. Um, the other sizes that are really useful, so this is 3 quarter inch ID, 1 eighth inch wall. This is 3 quarter inch, inch, three quarter inch ID, 1 16th inch wall, so the inner diameter is the same, but it's much thinner. You can see it bends a lot easier. And then this really large stuff, which is a 1 inch inner diameter with a 1 eighth inch wall. And this, this larger diameter stuff, I really only use if I'm making either multiple layers of rubber over a core, or if I'm trying to stretch this rubber around a really large sort of oversized core, which is actually part of the mallet project I'm involved with right now, which we'll get to in the next video. Uh, so what you want, you, you don't want things to be so tight that you can't do it with your hands, but when you're stretching this stuff over a core, it should not necessarily be easy to do because anything in there, any airspace, any play, is going to create a slapping sound. Uh, and, and not the kind of articulate yarn slap that some people like. It's just going to sound bad. So if you take, think, oh, this is a one-inch polycore, and this is tubing with a one-inch ID, and I just put it on like this and wrap it with yarn, it's going to sound awful because the tubing will be moving and the tubing will be actually hitting against the core because there's not a lot of tension there and you're going to have a mallet that sounds pretty bad. So just again, let's take this deconstruct it, reconstruct it. One and one eighth inch polycore with three quarter inch diameter eighth inch wall tubing. So you can see that with my hands I'm having to stretch it a little bit and that's going to happen. But once you get it around, roughly centered, on the core, like that, you can pretty much wrap this with any yarn on the planet and have a respectable, medium weight, medium hardness marimba mallet. It, it's amazing how good this sounds, this polyball core, with, with this piece of rubber. Now, to talk about how to make mallets in this kind of way with different, uh, with different hardnesses, uh, let me show you really quickly what the the other mallets in the Stevens line do. Um, because when I when I started building my own mallets, the first thing I wanted to do was reconstruct the cores uh, from these commercial mallets that I liked a lot. So the LS10 has this, like I said, one and one eighth inch poly core with an eighth inch of rubber around it. The next softest one is the LS5 which, now I reconstructed this with a red polycore, but it's the same one and one eighth inch polyplastic core. It's just red, so it has this. 
And then it has a layer of that very thin stuff, that 1 16th inch wall rubber. And then on top of that, another layer of the 1 8th inch rubber. So it's basically the LS10 with another 16th inch of rubber around it. You can see, it, it's hard to see because both of the color, both, oh, you can see it right there. So there, there's your two layers of tubing right there. There's one, there's two. It gives you something a little bit heavier because there's more rubber on the end of the plastic ball and it gives you something that has a little bit of a larger diameter because there's more rubber on the end of the plastic ball. Uh, and happily this works out well. Most commercial lines of mallets, the softer they get, the heavier they get, and the larger the mallet heads get. Um, because acoustically those three things working together generally make for a good sounding mallet. Um, you know, the low C on a five octave marimba is a large bar. You want a fairly large mallet head to move it the way we want to move it. So the LS10, the softer LS5 with an additional 16th inch of rubber, and then the LS1, the really, really, really soft one, actually has three layers of rubber. So it starts with this little tiny one inch polycore, and then a sixteenth of an inch of rubber, and then an eighth of an inch of rubber, and then on the outside is a slice of that really, really large diameter one, one eighth inch rubber um, hose. So what that means is that you've, you know, on your softest mallet, you have five sixteenths of an inch of rubber between the yarn and the plastic. On the next softest one, you have three sixteenths of an inch of rubber between the yarn and the plastic, and then the next step you have an eighth of an inch of rubber between the yarn and the plastic. Um, if you're thinking actively and are interested in this topic, you're probably going to guess that the LS15 has only a sixteenth of an inch of rubber between the polycore and the plastic, and I would be very interested to find that out. I'm going to guess that it's right. Um, but that's how you can take these materials, the, these little lengths of tubing and these plastic cores, and make mallets that uh, have these different hardnesses. Now, um, we can speculate as to why, for the very, very softest mallet, uh, Malatec goes to the slightly smaller one-inch plastic core. I think, I think that, I mean, you can still make a mallet that has the same plastic core with all those layers of rubber on it. I think you get you then start to get a mallet head that's really comically large. Um, and if you look at an LS1, even with that smaller plastic core, it's already kind of spherical and large, and it's, it's as big as anyone wants it to be. Um, and so to accommodate the right mallet head size with the level of softness that Stevens wants out of this, they use the slightly smaller plastic core. Good. Okay. So... Rubber tubing, really, really useful stuff. Um, I also end up using rubber tubing a lot with rubber cores. Now, you have to be careful with that just because rubber cores are heavier than plastic cores, and if you start piling layers of latex rubber tubing over a rubber core, it's very easy to make a heavy, heavy mallet. And so you want to be careful and you want to balance out the hardness of the rubber core against the amount of rubber tubing you're piling on it to, to, to come up with not only a mallet that has the right hardness and softness but that isn't too light or too heavy. And so I'll, I'll take you through what I'm doing right now with uh, a set of rubber core mallets I'm in the middle of building. So there are five different hardnesses. They all have, the, the, all of the cores are rubber cores, one and one eighth inch rubber cores with, with uh, various hardnesses with different uh, latex outer layers. And I'll start with the softest one. This is an Encore rubber core. And you can actually get this, uh, you can get this from Steve Weiss as it is. It's a very, very, you know, well, not very soft, a fairly soft rubber ball on the end of a concert length birch dowel handle. You can get this for, I think, 12 bucks. It's really as, as mallets go, it's pretty inexpensive. And over the top of that is one one-eighth inch layer of rubber, the three-quarter inner diameter one-eighth inch wall stuff. Uh, by keeping the core really soft, what that ensures is that even, even at Forte, this is going to be a dark, 
sounding mallet. This mallet is never going to get bright at forte, but because there's only one rubber ball with one layer of latex over the top of it, it's going to keep the weight in check. It's going to it's going to mean that if I need to pick up four of these, I'm going to be able to hold and maneuver four of these without layers and layers and layers and layers of rubber on top of it. So that's the softest one. We'll call that the number one. Soft yellow rubber, one eighth inch tubing over the top of it. The next harder one is a harder rubber core with the same tubing. Now this is another one of those Encore mallets. I think the red they call medium. So it's a medium-ish rubber mallet, but it still has an eighth of an inch of latex around it. What that means is that it, at Forte, it is going to be harder than the than this yellow mallet because what happens when 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 you swing a mallet at a bar depending on how hard you're swinging it at a surface different layers of the mallet compress first the yarn compresses and then whatever under layers you have between the yarn and the core they compress and then eventually you get to the core so i would not be surprised if at p a piano or even mezzo piano if these two mallets sounded the same because you're really not getting down to hitting the core you're still working through the yarn and this and this first fair, you know fairly thick layer of latex but at forte these two mallets are going to be very very different and you're going to start hearing this slightly harder rubber core excuse me slightly harder rubber core kick through so that's the second mallet in the line an eighth of an inch of latex tubing over a slightly harder rubber core. This mallet I know you can also get on Steve Weiss for not much money. The next harder mallet is, now this says Malatex Soloist 9. This is also the same uh, rubber, I forget what the number is, but they have a green mallet in their natural rubber series. It's a really nice unwrapped rubber mallet. It's a little bit more expensive than the Encore unwrapped ones. Um, but the Malatex Soloist 9 is basically this green rubber core, softer than the red mallet, uh, just wrapped in their, in their gray Soloist yarn. I've taken the thin rubber tubing and put it over the top of this, so um, it's going to be lighter than the next softer mallet. It's going to be lighter than that. Uh, the mallet head's going to be a little bit smaller because there's only a sixteenth of an inch of rubber over a one and one eighth inch rubber ball than an eighth of an inch of rubber over a one and one eighth inch rubber ball. Um, but because, but the, the, the combination of less latex and this rubber core is actually going to make a harder mallet because there's less cushioning here. So that's the number three mallet. The number four mallet is that same Encore red rubber ball, but only with a sixteenth of an inch of rubber tubing around it. So like I said, it's, it's actually, the number four has the same core as the number two, but hopefully you can see there. These look like little googly eyes. Um, the number two has a thicker latex tubing overlay than the number four. And then the number five, the hardest one I'm working with right now, is the Encore... Where is it? Oh, the, the, the number of this is worn off, but you can find this too. This is the hard blue rubber ball with one sixteenth of an inch of latex over the top of it. So the hardest, the number five. And you, you could make a number six by just taking this off and going with the hard blue rubber ball and yarn. Um, I've, I've wrapped a few of these. When we get to wrapping, I'll, I'll show you, you know, what they look like with the yarn and without the yarn. Um, sorry, taking a second to put this back on. Uh, but in terms of basic latex tubing underlays, that's that's pretty much all I've got for for basic basic mallet making. We haven't talked about multitonal mallets. We haven't talked about two tone mallets. Um, but I'll gather a few things and talk about those in a minute. Okay, thanks.